All right, Miss Je- Mr. Jasper there, I'm going to have you mute because I have to do a lesson that's recorded for the All admin right. today. All right. All right, guys. It is fourth quarter. We have made it to fourth quarter. I promise we're going to be back in person in August, but for right now, we're going to really push hard uh, for everybody to finish strong fourth quarter. You guys are doing pretty good on attendance. Um, those of you that show up on a regular basis, you're doing awesome on attendance. Uh, we need to do a little bit better for some of you that don't show up on a regular basis. Uh, I see that I've got Ryan online here. I see Gabby. I see Christian. I see Jeremy. Jace. I see Jessica's foot. I see Elijah's online. Nick's online. Who else is there in person, Mr. Rhodes? I'm not sure that we have Justin back. We also have Frederick off on the margin there. Couldn't quite get him in. Got it. Uh, same for Damien. For Damien. Okay. Daniel. Who is it? Not Damien. Nathan. Daniel. 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 Got it. And Nathan as well. For Got whatever. It. Good group, good group. Glad to see everybody here. We're going to start off strong for fourth quarter. Um, so let's talk about our schedule for the week first. Um, today we're going to be starting with Japan. Um, tomorrow you guys are going to read like a very short, short, short article about what the weather's like in Japan. Uh, Wednesday is your Japan Ed Puzzle. Thursday we're actually going to play Jeopardy. Uh, which should be fun. Remember, extra credit on Thursday for showing up to play our review game. And then Friday is a free day. You guys have absolutely nothing to get done for me on Friday. So uh, I'm trying to make sure I build in a free day every single week so that if you guys have work to get done for other classes, you've got a little bit of a break from me. Um, just try to not fall behind this quarter. It's really important that we try to get everything in on time because um, it's hard to remember the information when it was, you know, six weeks ago that we learned it. So, all right, so I decided to do Japan a little differently today. Instead of just telling you um, all about Japan in a PowerPoint, I decided to do a comparison PowerPoint that shows you the differences between um, Japan and the United States. Just to give you an idea of what life is kind of like uh, for uh People in Japan versus people in the United States. So I'm going to present my screen. Here we go. All right, you should be able to see it now. There we go. Okay. So uh, what do you guys know about Japan already? Shout out some stuff for me. That what is terrible? The pollution, yeah, pollution is terrible. Pollution is, why do you think pollution is really bad in Japan? There's so many people there. There's a lot, There's of, a lot of people there. There are a lot of people there. I think that was Christian, right? That was Christian. You yes. also want some Jade? What else, do you, what else do you guys know about Japan? Japan? How many people are what exactly? Japanese people live there. Oh, live there. Oh. oh. Japanese people live there. That, Did you know that Tokyo is the most densely populated uh, city in the whole world? Yes, it is. Thank you very much, Jasper. It is very densely populated in Tokyo. But you guys know more about Japan than that. Come on now. That's where Pokemon was invented. Pokemon, Mr. Rhodes, who else had something? Uh, Gabby said something? Um, you know, you the flag is. Yeah, yeah, it's all white with the red circles. It is all white with the red circles. Very good. Yeah. And Jasper. One of the e they have one of the easiest flags to draw. That's probably true. Just just white with a red dot in the middle. Yes. And we probably know a little bit about anime, which has its home from Japan. Um, yes. We probably know a little bit about um, warriors from B Japan. What are the warriors in Japan called? Samurai. Samurai. Yeah, absolutely. So we know a little bit about life in Japan. Okay, so if this is a picture of the United States, and then there's the picture of Japan inside the United States. 
So Japan actually has more than 4,000 islands. It's a very, very big area, but it's tiny in comparison um, <coughs> to the United States. So we have over 9 million square miles. Uh, they have only 374,000. So it gives you an idea. Um, when we look at the population, we have 313 million. They have 127 million. So it's a little less than uh, half. Um, but if we go back to the map here for a minute, um, obviously our country is spread out with our 313 million. Theirs is very condensed, which is why Christian said um, that pollution is, is a big problem there and why Jasper also mentioned that Tokyo is so densely populated because they have to get so many people into a smaller land area. So um, as far as population density, um, when we look at that, what, what does density mean? So Jasper told us that they're the most po densely populated. What does it mean, density mean? Compact, question mark. Christian says uh, compact. Yeah, that's a good way of looking at it. Um, compact. So how, how compact are they into a small area? So when we look at persons per square um, mile or persons per square kilomile, kilomile here, um, 29 per square mile for the United States, 336 per square mile for Japan. So it's a lot of people stuffed into a very small area. When we look at the population growth, this is really interesting. So for the United States, we're looking at um, by 2050, they think we'll have almost 400 million Americans. OK, so in your lifetime, we're going to add another 100 million people to the United States. <coughs> um, the population projections for Japan by 2050 is that they'll be at 109,000 or 100. Yeah, 109,000 more. Um, so who's growing faster? The United States. Okay, so Jace, why why do you think, um, what's going to happen based on that, though? Jace? Yep, Jace, can you predict what's going to happen as a result of the growth for either of these countries? They'll probably die. They're, they're going to die? <laughs> the population gets too big, it starts to take a dip down. Okay, well, um, that's probably um, true in most cases. Right now, our population actually, before the pandemic, um, was kind of slipping down, both in Japan and in the United States. Um, and it's because uh, the generation that is your parents aren't having as many kids as the generations before them. But what we're going to see now is a big boost in both populations. Um, and as a result of that, um, you're going to see a lot of different changes in, in different kind of jobs. Instead of right now, our country is fast, fast building um, retirement centers and senior centers because we have all these baby boomers that are getting to be that age. By 2050, our country is going to be building more schools and more recreation centers because so much of our population will be younger at that point. Um, so it changes kind of how we do things in our country based on um, the population's average age. Right now, the biggest population we have is the elderly. By the time you guys get to be adults, the biggest population we will have will probably be children. So it changes a little bit on what jobs are offered and kind of what areas we go in. So the migration rate... Um, uh, as you pointed out that uh, Tokyo is the most densely populated city, it's also the second busiest city, uh, busiest city in the world uh, and experiences very little population movement. In other words, there's not a lot of people moving in and out of Japan. The people who are there stay there um, and they don't have a whole lot of people moving to live there. Whereas in the United States, we have a huge migration rate. We have a 3% migration rate, which means people move in and out of states and in and out of our country on a regular basis. Okay, so a few other statistics. The world's most populated cities, Tokyo, number one, okay? Look at how many people live in Tokyo. New York City is really, really packed for us. We have 19 million people that live in New York City. That's insane, right? They have 32 million that live in Tokyo alone. Um, <clears throat> Tokyo, uh, Japan is rated number 10 in the world for the best health systems. The United States, 37. That's a terrible ranking. <clears throat> Why do you think the Japanese 
health system is better. Did they have like better uh, <clears throat> ways of paying for health? <laughs> okay, um, that's absolutely right. So they have the, uh, they have a socialism system for their medical care there, which means that the people who live in Japan do not have to pay for medical care. The government pays for it. Um, so that means that that's what I wish we had here. Yes. Um, so that means that their population tends to live longer. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm coughing a lot today. Their population tends to live longer and have less medical issues because they don't have to pay for it. Um, so we'll look at that in just a second of how long they live. Japan is a leading nation in innovation technology. We have companies such as Sony, Canon, Hitachi, Fuji. They're leaders in the computer and electronic advancement. The United States historically has been a leader in tech and innovation too, but the most recent computer and network driven advancements are happening outside the United States. Um, so what do you think this suggests about the future of our two countries? Somebody other than Jasper, because Jasper gave me a lot of answers today, but I need some people that are in period two answering me. Christian says Japan will be more advanced than America. Okay, and it probably means that we're going to have um, to build a really good relationship with them for the access to this technology. Imports and exports, things that we send out and things that we bring in. I think we're going to see a big uh, change in Japan and the United States becoming closer and working more together as Japan has all these innovations and shares it with the United States. So where would you prefer to learn? Let's figure out what school's like in Japan. American schools, we begin teaching at age five with kindergarten, and you guys graduate at 18 with a general diploma. Japan is very different. They start teaching at age six in the first grade. Students choose a preparatory path before high school. So you have to choose your career before high school even begins. And over 80% of the people in that country follow their path into higher education and actually do what they decided before high school. So imagine if I said to seventh grade, Jace, what do you want to be when you grow up? Um, in Japan, over 80% of people actually do what they said in seventh grade. Um, in addition, the class sizes in Japan are very large compared to the United States. On average, we have around 20 to 25. Um, they have closer to 40 in a classroom at a time. Um, and in Japan, they're expected to learn from direct instruction and practice, um, and their classes are not as interactive. So 99% of their classes are just complete lecture and then work for the students to do the lecture. They don't do interactive <laughs> projects. They don't do hands-on projects. They don't have classes where they ask questions and get students to answer. Um, so it's a very different environment. This is very similar to uh, what I learned in German class at my old school about uh how german uh schools and also uh it's also in switzerland and stuff too yep where you choose your career and in germany you actually work for your career for some of the uh work days that's very so, yeah. true so, that'd be a lot more helpful if uh like the united states had those kind of school systems too where we do we have all of our amazing cte programs where we start you guys off uh, pretty early on and say, hey, if you're not going to be heading on to a traditional college, let's do some trade um, schools and let's really, because, oh, you know. Sounds like a really good idea. We have lots of people who want to be doctors and lawyers and dancers and actors and teachers, but we still need an elevator repairman, you know, because I don't want to get on an elevator that isn't working right. Uh, we need plumbers. We need electricians. We need welders. Uh, so a lot of the programs at Clay are offered to you guys so that you have that experience. So let's look at cost of living. So I decided to look at the cost of living based on McDonald's because Gabby and I, we love our McDonald's. Um, so a combo meal in the United States costs $6.12. A combo meal in Japan costs $8.07. Um, so what does that tell you guys about Japan? It's more expensive. It is more expensive. Yeah. But I also heard in Japan they actually make uh, the food look more uh, like what the picture shows. Uh, I don't know about that, but it is way more expensive to live in Japan than yeah. it is in the United States. So, uh, Jeremy, because I haven't heard from you today, uh, when's the last time you went to the store to buy something without an adult? Never. 
Never? Just never. You've never gone to the store to buy something? Like somebody said, here's some money, go buy some milk. Just run in and grab some milk. I don't know. They're like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, well, eventually, we're going to have to go grocery shopping as a class so that you guys can figure out how much food actually costs. What, even though the cost of living is higher in Japan, the cost of all of these products, if you guys look at it, is actually quite a bit less. So it's it's over half. So milk is two thirty six in the United States. It's one twelve in in Japan. Oranges six fifty one here, three forty six there. Um, let's see, lettuce two forty four here, one fifty one there. Chicken breast, that's a good one. Ten forty seven for chicken breast, seven twenty eight there. So. If most of the food costs so much less in Japan, we have to figure out why the cost of living is so much more there. And it's uh, because of, oh, there we go. Um, oh, didn't show it to you. It's because the cost of living, um, the actual rent in Japan is, and the cost of housing is so much more expensive. And the reason for that is because so many people live in Japan and there's not a lot of land that it's actually really hard to find a place to live because uh, they don't have enough housing for all the people there, which is why Japan leads the world in skyscrapers because they have to keep building upwards um, because they don't have enough land to house everybody. So even people with little children will live in like, uh, you know, the 49th floor of an apartment complex uh, because it's really common to live in those skyscrapers there. In the United States, most people travel by car some in the bigger cities might use public transportation, but it's very rare compared to Japan. In Japan, almost everybody uses public transportation or they walk or they ride bicycles. Bicycles is really, really common. And as you can see these guys here, it is so crowded on the subway that those are the, like, the platform guys that are shoving people in so they can even shut the door. I've heard of those. Yeah, so uh, Jessica, I haven't heard from you yet today. Which nation's transportation system do you think is better? Would you rather be on the train? You think that's better? Or the cars? That's the United States. Okay, so um, Christian, you mentioned pollution. Which which system is going to be better for pollution? All the cars or the trains? Uh, you mean like we're enforcing the pollution or like we're like less? Which one would make for less pollution? Oh, uh, the subways. Yeah. The subways would make less yeah, absolutely. And that's why they use them to try and reduce the amount of smog that you see in Japan because of the number of people that live there. So life expectancy, how long are we going to live? In the United States, your life expectancy is 78 years old. Okay. Uh, in Japan, it's 82. And they actually have the number one life expectancy in the world. And that's because they have this amazing health system there where they take care of everybody. And they also have a huge respect for the elderly. They considered the elderly to be their national treasures. They have no old folks homes in Japan whatsoever. Uh, when you get to be a certain age, your children are expected to take care of you in Japan and you're a member of the family and you're very important. Um, so they don't put any of their senior citizens away in homes. They take care of them themselves. Just some fun facts here. We drive on the right side of the road in the United States. They drive on the left side of the road in Japan. You can drive at 16 here. They have to wait till 18 there. Our age of consent, meaning when you're considered an adult to make decisions for yourself, is at 18. Their age of consent is 13. Uh, currency in the United States is the dollar. Currency in Japan is the yen. We use way more electricity and oil. They use far less than that. We eat more meats and processed foods. In Japan, it's fresh foods, rice, veggies, and lots and lots of fish. Why do they eat so much fish in Japan? And Jasper, you're not allowed to answer this one. I'm going to give this one to Daniel. Daniel, why do they eat so much fish in Japan? Because they're island country surrounded by ocean. Absolutely. So if that's what you got, then that's what you eat, right? Um, so... Where would you rather live, in the United States or in Japan? I'd pick Japan. They have free health care, and okay, I have many surgeries to have had. That's a good reason. Ryan, what do you think, Japan or the United States? Let's 
see if he typed it in. I think it left. Oh, maybe. Um, Elijah, what do you think? Japan or the United States? Elijah. He said Japan. Levon, Japan, or the United States. Japan. Oh my gosh, everybody's saying Japan. No one's go USA today. Who anybody in the classroom say United States? I'm staying in the United States. Jeremy. Jeremy and I. Jeremy, I have a terrible fear of all seafood. So I'm not going anywhere near Japan because I don't like seafood. I'm terrified of it all. Um, I love seafood. So I'll stay here for the moment. So that's our introduction to Japan. Tomorrow you guys are going to read a short, short, short. I promise it's short, but I want you to read it. It's all about the weather um, and the climate in Japan. And then there's two questions to answer, which is super easy. Wednesday, you guys have your Ed Puzzle. Thursday, you guys are going to play Jeopardy, which is going to be so much fun because I actually downloaded the Jeopardy game. So it feels like we're actually playing it. And then Friday is your free day. So please be there on Thursday. It's super helpful. Everybody remember to do your attendance Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, even on the free day. Uh, and we're going to start off this fourth quarter great. Any questions about Japan? Nope. nope. Okay. I will see you guys on Thursday. Have a great beginning of your week. All right. Thank you, Mr. Walter. Thank you.